In the last two episodes or videos, lectures, in the first one we assemble the major components into the upper half of the enclosure. In the second one, we pre-prepared by soldering wires to the two bulkhead connectors and to the pilot light. Now we're going to, in this session, we're going to start soldering the jumpers between the negative or common sides of the devices, jumpering them, daisy chaining them, and the positive. So we're going to do a negative bus and a positive bus, and then we're going to begin connecting the individual conductors between the toggle switches and the push buttons. We do this in a particular order. We try to do the conductors that are on the, on, I guess you would say on the inside of the top of the box, since we're working on it upside down, they would be the ones that go against the underside of the cover. And that way, as we add more conductors, we're not working in, in an entanglement. So there's a logical order to doing this. I've, I've built uh, hundreds of these. So after a while, you kind of learn to do it with the least amount of grief. Let's get at this. What we're starting out here with is we have five links of black conductor stripped a quarter inch on each end. And these links are basically three and a half inches. They could be a little shorter and still look nice, or they could be longer. It's better to be too long than too short, believe me. And then we have five links of red three and a half inches and we've got a dozen lengths of blue three and a half inches you'll see in a minute where they go so let's start out and look at what we've got so far i have two lengths of the black setting in place with the stripped ends poked through the eyelet on the soldering lug on this uh, particular push button now it could be on any of these there's a reason that I picked this one first is because on this negative terminal, this is for the LED. Now remember there's five solder lugs on each of these push buttons. The one that's closest to the set of three, those three are the, the normally closed, normally open form C contacts for the push button. And then the two on each ends here are the plus and minus for the LED. Well, this one on this end, closest to the push button solder lugs is the positive terminal. And this one that's further away is the negative terminal. This negative terminal will have to pick up a negative lead from the LED pilot light that goes in this hole and a um, jumper from this solder lug to this one and another black conductor that's going to be used for another purpose. So there'll be three of them pushed through this eyelet. So that's why we're starting here. It's always good to solder one end of the conductor so it's anchored. We could put both ends, this end into here, this end into here, and just thread them all in, then bang, 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 solder them. Uh, you might get away with that, you might not, because what I do is I lay in the conductors and I have it wedged in between two solder lugs on my toggle switch here. And here I have it kind of wedged against a solder lug. These two conductors are in that eyelet by tension. That's what's holding them there. Because we don't want them to move when we go to solder them. Now what we're going to do, and by the way these conductors uh, really need to be stranded. You could use solid wire if you want. That's your business. I recommend stranded. So what we have here are three conductors or three contacts. Each wire stripped in is a contact and then the solder lug itself. So when we solder, we have to make sure that we completely wet all three conductors with the solder. By wet, it's similar to wetting a surface and breaking down the surface tension with soap, a spot of soap and water to get it to wet the surface. So when the solder uh, joint is finished, 
the shape is more concave than convex, meaning that the solder kind of gets sucked gets sucked into the joint and it forms a concave shape to all the conductors. So I'm going to bring in the solder soldering iron now and uh, or I should say pencil I guess the difference is how big the tip is. Uh, remember we want to use as little heat as is possible. Now my hands not as steady as it used to be uh, I have to brace it against something you can't see it it's over to the side and then I bring the soldering tip in. Now these soldering lugs on these push buttons are pretty durable so they can handle quite a bit of heat without melting the plastic base. When we start doing the switches that's a different story. We have to get on them and off really quick. So I'm going to bring in the soldering pencil and rest it on all three pieces and I'm going to use the soldering iron to actually melt the solder. Once I get sufficient solder melted I move the pencil into a better position so it's applying more heat evenly and then release it. And if you look close you can see that the solder has uh, completely wetted all three pieces and it's made kind of a concave sweeping shape into the soldering lug itself. And then of course we can trim off the excess later. What we have now is we're to this negative soldering lug on the uh, the bottom push button and notice that we have three black wires uh, resting inside of that eyelet. One black wire you can see loops over here to the jumper. It jumpers that negative terminal to that negative terminal. Then you've got a wire that curls down underneath. That one's 10-12 inches long and that one's going to extend into the other half of the box. So that's a three and a half inch piece, 10 to 12 inches, and this one is about four inches and it extends over to the pilot light which you can't see. It's just slightly over an inch or so. So I've got three conductors in there and I'm going to go in with the heat, start melting some solder, and I'm visually kind of watching where the solder is going and I kind of have a feel. Something that you probably can't see because I don't know if I can get it focused good enough but the solder wicked, W-I-C-K-E-D, wicked from this side through the eyelet and up into the strands of the conductors on the other side. So there's a lot of little things that you can look at to know when you you have a completed solid solder joint. And then we're going to trim this and we have plenty of spacer so we really don't have to trim it that much. Now in the old days when you made a solder joint they would say that you need to make a good a good mechanical joint meaning that you need to put slide the wires through and then fold them back around the side of the eyelet so mechanically the wires will stay in there without any solder. Now there was a reason for doing that many years ago when there was a lot of heat involved in vacuum tube electronics because of the amount of heat that could get into the chassis I think there was some concern that the heat could soften the solder and the wires would fall out or the amount of current that was flowing would be high enough that if you had a little resistance in the joint you would dissipate heat at that resistive point and you could melt the solder and then the wire would fall out. I, w I would not worry about that with any of the type of stuff that we're building. There's not going to be enough heat to soften that solder and let the wires fall out. But you do want to make sure that they're in there solid. So I always tug on them and look them over really close. Now I'm going to slide this over so you can see the pilot light which we have a black and a red wire. Now the red wire for the pilot light should be long enough to reach all the way into the other half of the enclosure. So let's keep going on this. Okay, we've got uh, good examples of the soldering practices and wiring started. So we're going to stop in this lecture at this point, and then we're going to continue on soldering in the rest of the conductors between the switches and lights in the next video.
rather than have a separate video talking about good soldering practices, I try to embed some tips and tricks right into this lecture rather than just assume, because I'll be honest with you, the more I talk to people in the field, the fewer people I find that do a fair amount of soldering. If you just use your head and you pay attention to what you're doing with the heat, not overheat stuff, but you still got to get enough heat into the metals. All the metals involved have to get hot enough where they by themselves can melt the solder. Putting melted solder against a metal piece is not a connection. You have to heat the metal and the metal has to be able to melt the solder. Otherwise it's not going to wet into the connection. So let's stop here and we'll come back and continue. Thank you.